What's going on, guys? Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com coming live from my living room because I'm stuck here. And I'm sure some of you guys across the country are stuck in your house as well. It's a tough time for everyone. But I wanted to answer a hitting question today. And I'm actually going to shoot a bunch of videos today answering questions. But I wanted to break out my mini wiffle ball pitching machine right here. And I'm going to actually take some hacks on it while I'm answering the questions. And this is such a great training tool because you can do it anywhere. I'm about to do it in my living room. You know, they're mini wiffle balls. They don't break anything. They don't hurt anything. Um, as long as you're swinging away from the walls and you don't hit the walls, uh, you're gonna be good. And this is a great way to get your hitting in when you can't get outside. Even when you, we are able to get outside, you can bring this thing outside. It's awesome because it throws different speeds, 25, 35, 45, 55 miles an hour, the balls move. And if you can hit a mini wiffle ball with a small barrel bat, skinny barrel bat, just think about how easy it's going to be to hit a regular size baseball with a regular size bat when you get out to the field. So take this opportunity that we're inside to really uh, get your work in because a lot of guys are just sitting on the couch right now taking this time as a vacation. So you can really get ahead of the pack and uh, do some damage when we get back out there on the field. The mini wiffle ball pitching machine is on sale on my website right now for the next few weeks just so I can get these out to you guys so you can put in the work inside and uh, hit the field running when we get out there. So the question that I got today is from David Barnes and he asks, any drills for learning to stay back on the ball? My son hits out front, rarely strikes out ever, but loses a lot of power, not letting the ball get all the way to him. Um, well, let's talk about it. All right, let me get this thing set up here. I'm gonna go for 35 miles an hour right here. So I'm gonna go S1 up, S2 middle. So S1 up, S2 stays middle. And I want the ball feeder to be slow. So I'm gonna go up, because I want time to talk to you guys. And then he's gonna shoot the balls out. Whoa, I need to aim that better. This is money. Good. Oh, time out. I just had a great idea. I'm gonna hang this up right here on my kitchen. And uh, cause that's opposite field to me, right? Cause I'm hitting from here. I'll just give you a little perspective. I'm hitting from here. So you see the mini wiffle ball machine right about there. And so that's opposite field for me, right in the kitchen. So I'm gonna hang that poster up here so I can work on hitting opposite field. Now, my wife is gone. She'll be gone for a few more minutes. So I'll have this taken down, no problem. Nobody's gonna know anything. Let's work on some hitting. This is gonna work out perfect. All right, David, so what I would do is a couple things. First of all, start him off on a tee, and the tee is great to work on because you can work on the placement of the ball. So you can really let the ball get deep or set the tee deep in his swing so he can feel what it feels like to let it get that deep and put a swing on it, drive it up the middle or slightly opposite field. Now, the issue with the tee is that there's no timing involved, right? So it's great to start there. That's where I would start him. It would be on the tee, placing the ball deep in his stance, having him drive it slightly uh, opposite field or up the middle. What I would do then is progress it to a heavier ball, right? So once he gets the feel for that and he starts consistently hitting line drives up the middle, slightly opposite field, then we can go ahead and put like a one pound um, sand ball on there and uh, have him do the same thing. So now he's gonna be understanding what it feels like to get to that contact point but have power behind it because if he's just getting there and throwing the bat there and hitting it the right way that's great but if he doesn't have any power behind it then there's going to be an issue so when you throw those weighted balls up there he's going to really feel what it feels like to get down the contact point and if he's, if he's weak there he's going to feel it and you're going to see it he's going to be rolling over it's going to be hitting the ball very weakly um, so then he's going to have to learn how to drive from that same position and letting the ball get a little deeper 
So that's the second thing I would do. The third thing that I would do is get more live pitching because this is a timing issue, right? It's very common. He sees the ball, he wants to hit the ball, so he goes out and tries to get the ball. But he has to learn how to let it travel. So we worked on it on the tee by hitting the ball deeper, but now he's gotta learn how to let that ball get deeper. A lot of times we don't, feel, as hitters, we feel like the ball's gonna get by us, so we try to go get it early, right? Especially at the younger ages, because pitches are coming in slower, so they see it out of the hand earlier, and they try to go and get it because they have more time, right? More reaction time. So we really got to let him feel what it feels like to let that ball get deeper. So almost have him try to wait, 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 as long as he can. I would over-exaggerate this when you're doing live pitching. Over-exaggerate the amount of time that he waits before he starts his swing. Because he's starting his swing very early, obviously. He's going to chase the ball. So when he does that, after you couple that with repetitions off of the tee, with regular balls and then heavy balls, and then add in your timing drills with the live BP, I think you're going to see a big improvement. Now, the issue comes when you're doing these reps, especially the live reps, you have to make sure they're quality, right? You don't want to just get out there and tell him to wait, and then he's still lunging at the ball. Because if you're just doing that, then you're, uh, you're ingraining bad, the bad habits, right? So you got to make sure the reps are quality reps over quantity reps, right? Um, really have to focus on the quality and, and letting that ball get deep and driving it to up the middle or slightly opposite field. So... I hope that helps. Um, if you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to You Go Pro Baseball on YouTube. Got a lot of new videos coming out real soon. And uh, thank you so much for watching. If there's anything I can help you with, let me know. Thanks, guys. Uh, actually, this is for sale on my website as well. I'll leave a link down below.